Hey folks, this is Riker with the Diablo 3 patch 2.6.1 Barbarian Build Guide. We now know the start date for Season 12 that will be November 9th, the week after BlizzCon, and Season 11 is ending October 20th. We can expect patch 2.6.1 to release sometime between those two dates, more likely closer to the start of the new season. As we get closer to that start of the season, I will have my new updated tier list of the best builds going into the next patch, but for now we're taking a look at what's looking to be one of those top builds, and possibly the top Barbarian build, the Charge Barbarian. Yes, this is an old classic that has returned thanks to some buffs that have been made to the gear, damage increases, toughness increases, this is the same build that we used to know with some minor changes, and it is crazy powerful. Now the Whirlwind Barbarian is still doing very well, it received a bit of a nerf during the PTR, we have a build guide on that, and it's been nerfed since that guide, but people overreacted to the nerf, it's not as bad as it seems, it's only a couple Greater Rift levels weaker, and still gonna be a very strong build. So let's start with an overview of the gear that you need to rock this build, and we'll go over skills as well. Starting with the gear, we need the 4-piece bonus of the Raycor set, as well as the 6-piece bonus of the Immortal King set, and you'll accomplish that by also having a Ring of Royal Grandeur, which reduces the number of items needed for set bonuses by 1. So you'll have 3 pieces of Raycor equipped, and 5 pieces of Immortal King. Now the 2-piece bonus of Raycor makes Furious Charge refund a charge if it hits only one enemy. This is going to be immensely important to maintaining our charges against single target, especially against Rift Guardians, as well as stragglers that are left behind when you're just trying to finish off a pack, for instance. The 4-piece bonus gives Furious Charge the effect of every rune and makes it deal a lot more damage. This is another important bonus. Now, we're foregoing the 6-piece bonus here because this actually does not buff Furious Charge damage, but instead a spender damage, and we are not really working a damaging spender, a significant one, into this build. Then, taking a look at the Immortal King set, the two-piece bonus makes Call of the Ancients last until they die, and you may at first think, while they never die, they do sometimes die, so do keep an eye up in the top left at your count every so often, and respawn them, just resummon the ability when you need to. The four-piece bonus reduces the cooldown on Wrath of the Berserker and Call of the Ancients by three seconds for every 10 fury you spend with an attack. This will be key to having permanent uptime on these abilities. We're gonna be dumping fury just to maintain perma uptime, and we need both of these powers. They're both very strong buffs, and they're also critical and indispensable to the six-piece bonus of the IK set, which is while you have both of these active, you deal a lot more damage. So again, you'll have three pieces of Raycor and five pieces of IK equipped. It doesn't really matter what you get where, apart from certain exceptions being for Raker, you need the shoulders because there are no IK shoulders, and for IK, you need the belt, and the weapon because there is no rake or equivalent. How you divide the other items is mostly up to you. It's principally gonna be what rolls better. As we covered, you need a Ring of Royal Grandeur, and then for your other ring, we're squeezing in a Convention of Elements. That's gonna be more damage, and when we look at our cube, we'll see what our other ring is, and then we're getting Ancient Parthen Defenders. This is for added toughness. Our charge will be causing a stun effect, which will allow us to benefit from this damage reduction. We're gonna go with the Hellfire Amulet to squeeze in yet another passive. The Barbarian has some really good passives, so Hellfire Amulet is a very inviting choice. If you wanna be safer, you could go with a Traveler's Pledge and a Compass Rose, but you shouldn't need that extra toughness. You should be fine with the Hellfire and a Convention. Then in our cube, very important is the Band of Might Ring. This gives us now up to 80% damage reduction after charging. We're gonna wanna be under that effect at all times. It's thanks to this buff that we don't need to go with the Endless Walk set. Also in our cube, we'll want the Vile Ward Shoulders, that's these over here. For every enemy that you hit while charging, your Furious Charge deals 35% increased damage. This build is particularly strong at grouping up packs of enemies and melting them down. It suffers against single target, but it could still manage. And then lastly, Critical in your cube here is the standoff. This gives you bonus damage to Furious Charge based on your move speed. And this is a very interesting mechanic that's gonna make us want to stack more move speed in order to deal 
even more damage. It's actually for this reason that we're working in a Wreath of Lightning into this build. A gem that's otherwise only been relegated really to speed farming is now very important to Greater Rift pushing. Now I have mine leveled up to 88, but really there's no point in getting it above level 25. All that's benefiting us is that level 25 bonus, while under the effect of Wreath of Lightning, gain 25% increased movement speed, and this translates into a big damage buff thanks to the standoff. So at a base movement speed bonus of 25%, standoff is giving us 12,500% increased damage. The Wreath of Lightning bonus doubles that to 25,000% increased damage. For our other gems, we'll want a Bane of the Trapped. Again, one of the best gems in the game. This is a flat damage buff to all enemies we're hitting. And then lastly, for Greater Rift pushing, you'll want a Bane of the Stricken. This will really help with that single target damage. Again, we suffer against the Rift Guardian, so just hitting him again and again and again and again. We're gonna build up our damage and be able to slowly whittle him down at an accelerated pace. If you're pushing easier content, you can go with the Bane of the Powerful instead. All right, now, before we go into the specifics of what you want on every piece of gear, let's first take a look at the skills. So Furious Charge is our everything. It's our mobility and it's our damage. The rune you select doesn't really matter because you're getting every rune. However, it will determine your elemental damage type. So in this case, we're going with fire. But really, it'll be your gear that determines what element you go with. You want both your amulet and your bracer to have the same elemental damage type and then pick whatever rune that might be for Furious Charge. Your options are physical, fire, cold, and lightning. Now, Furious Charge generates fury for us and Furious Charge works on charges. Every 10 seconds you gain one charge and can have at base a max of two charges. So that means you can do two quick charges before running out of charges. But remember, our two-piece bonus of Raycor makes us refund a charge if we only strike one target. The Battering Ram rune just increases the amount of damage that Furious Charge does. And then Merciless Assault reduces the time required to build up another charge by two seconds for every enemy hit. This allows you to instantly get a charge back if you hit enough enemies, five being the minimum for an instant charge refund. This means that ideally you only ever want to be hitting at least five enemies or exactly one enemy. Now the more cooldown reduction you have, the fewer enemies you can hit. At 20% cooldown reduction, you only need to hit four enemies. At 40% cooldown reduction, you only need to hit three enemies. But in the gameplay you're seeing, I have around 17% cooldown reduction. And in the gearing we're gonna recommend, we're actually gonna suggest no cooldown reduction because with perfect play, you shouldn't need any. But that said, just bear that in mind. Adding cooldown reduction wherever you see fit will just make this build more smooth to run and you'll less often find yourself with zero charges. Now stamina lets you generate more fury with furious charge, cold rush applies a crowd control to enemies, and dreadnought lets you throw up to three charges instead of two. The next skill we'll want to take is battle rage bloodshed. Try to maintain this buff at all times, it gives us a big damage boost. Next we'll go with sprint marathon. This costs us fury in order to give us a speed boost and the marathon rune just lets it last longer and basically this is required to be dealing our max damage. Remember, move speed translates into greater damage. So you ideally want to make sure that anytime you want to be dealing damage, you have sprint up. Sometimes while I'm charging around, I'm just trying to build density so I don't have sprint up necessarily. I'm just trying to herd monsters together. But when I really want to be taking down monsters, I'll have my sprint on. Next, we're going with Wrath of the Berserker Insanity. Again, we need this skill and the Insanity Rune just gives us a huge damage buff. We'll be under these effects at all times. This also gives us a move speed buff, dodge chance, attack speed, crit chance. And then for Call of the Ancients, we're taking together as one as a very strong defensive buff. This effectively doubles our toughness so long as our Ancients are alive. Then we're taking Ancient Spear Boulder Toss. This is our Fury Dump. The damage here is insignificant. We're using this to dump our fury in order to better refresh our cooldowns, as well as to serve as a mini healing potion. We're going to want to get some life per fury spent in order to turn Boulder Toss into an excellent source of sustain. And remember, our Immortal King set reduces the cooldown on Wrath of the Berserker and Call of the Ancients every time we spend fury, so this is necessary to maintain permanent Wrath of the Berserker. Then for our passives, we'll want 
Nerves of Steel, having a free life is always very beneficial when you're pushing greater rifts. We'll want Ruthless to help us finish off enemies, it's a big damage buff. Remember, this build excels at killing big groups of enemies, but when there's only a few left, it really starts to suffer, so... Generally, when enemies are low on health, it's probably when you only have a few left, maybe even just one, so this helps us finish the fight faster. Brawler does basically the opposite against big groups of enemies, or even just any group of enemies. I think anything more than two could be called a group. You deal more damage, and then Berserker Rage makes us deal even more damage while near maximum fury, and since our damage dealer is a fury generator, will always be at max fury unless we've just popped one of our spenders, be it Battle Rage Bloodshed, Sprint Marathon, or Ancient Spear Boulder Toss. In my experience, Ancient Spear Boulder Toss is the one you'll be popping the most often for that sustain. Now, because we're going with a Hellfire Amulet, we'll have a fifth passive, and Rampage is what's recommended. This is a nice defensive and offensive buff. Now, before we get back into the gear and exactly what we want on every piece of gear, I need to comment on the gameplay. This is one of the more challenging builds in the game to play. It is very cognitively demanding. There's a lot to manage, a lot to remain aware of. You have to make sure Battle Rage Bloodshed never expires. You have to be very conscientious of where you are charging to ensure you don't run out of charges. You have to make sure you're launching Ancient Spear Boulder Toss often enough to reset the cooldown on Wrath of the Berserker. You have to make sure Sprint is up whenever you want to be dealing your max damage with Furious Charge. And on top of all that, Convention of Elements, you want to make sure you're in your maximum damage window, but if you want to play this the slightly lazier way, you can just forget you have a Convention and just let the damage bonus happen when it does, but if you absolutely want to maximize your damage potential, then you need to be lining up your dominoes such that in your correct elemental rotation, that's when we're doing your maximum charges. Now, in the gameplay, what you're seeing is a Greater Rift 90 being done by someone myself, who is not a veteran of this build. I have suboptimal gear, suboptimal paragon, and suboptimal experience running this build. If you want to see an absolute pro, if you want to see the Barbarian Master, check out Chainer on Twitch and YouTube. Chainer is basically the Barbarian God. He is the Quinn 69 of Barbarians. Mad props to Chainer, so check him out if you want to see that top-level gameplay. On the test server, he did a Greater Rift 115 with the charge barb and it should be able to go even higher than that so now let's take a look at the gear and the optimal stats that we want on every piece of gear i'll have a link in the description below to the d3 planner where i have all the best in slot gear note that my gear is not best in slot so go by what i'm saying and not what you're seeing on screen i will be able to update the d3 planner link as more optimum variants may or may not emerge. So do check back as we get closer to the start of the season to see if any changes have been made. So starting with your shoulders, you'll want strength, vitality, area damage, furious charge damage. If you want cooldown, this is a place where you can get cooldown and you can either sacrifice toughness, i.e. vitality, or damage, and if I were to sacrifice something, it would probably be furious charge damage. Next for our helm, strength, vitality, crit chance, then because we're running with no cooldown, we're going with an Amethyst for more toughness. If you really want the cooldown, you can go with the Diamond instead. Just be aware that Chainer did a zero cooldown build. He has absolutely no cooldown whatsoever. For your Hellfire, you'll want crit chance, crit damage, and then elemental damage. Again, whatever element you're going with, get that elemental damage type. And then the best passive to get on your Hellfire would be Nerves of Steel. That just makes it usable with more than one build. But it doesn't really matter. For your torso, strength, vitality, furious charge damage. For the gems in your panzer torso, if you want toughness, go for diamonds. If you want damage, go for rubies. For your gloves, strength, crit chance, crit damage, area damage. If you really want to squeeze in cooldown, you can sacrifice area damage for that. Just be aware that any cooldown that you get will lower your overall damage. For your belt, you'll want strength, vitality, all resist, life percent, or you can squeeze in life per fury spent somewhere there. You want one item with life per fury spent. Two is a bit of overkill. With just one item, you should find yourself one ancient item. You should be able to find yourself basically healing for full when you use your ancient spear boulder toss. And your options either getting it on your belt or on your weapon. As always, wherever you can, squeeze in a secondary resistance. For your pants, strength, vitality, all resist. For your boots, strength, vitality, all resist armor. For your ring, the ideal ring to have equipped would be a Band of Might. It rolls with better stats than a Ring of Royal Grandeur, but good luck finding a perfect one. That said, 
you will ideally want that there. So your perfect band of might will be crit, crit, area damage. Again, if you really want cooldown, you can sacrifice and get it there. On your convention of elements, crit, crit, area damage. Or again, you can sacrifice area damage for cooldown. And then for your weapon, percent damage, strength, and then either life per fury spent or vitality. For your paragon points, get your max move speed up to 25%. Then dump everything into Fury, and then into Strength. For Offense, this is where you'll want to first dump into cooldown reduction. Even just 10% cooldown reduction from here makes it so that if you only hit 4 enemies, you don't have to wait very long for another charge. Then Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Attack Speed. For Defense, All Resist, Life, Armor, Life Regen. And then for Utility, you want Area Damage, Life Per Hit, Gold Find, and just skip resource cost reduction entirely. We want to be spending as much resource as possible to chain our abilities. I actually forgot about that in this one and I had my resource cost reduction maxed out. Now to modify this build for speedrunning, because it could also make a great speedrunning build, you can swap out Bloodshed for Ferocity to increase your base movement speed. You won't really need the extra Bloodshed damage. Instead of Nerves of Steel, since you won't really be dying, you can go with Pound of Flesh. This gives you yet more move speed. You can substitute your Bracers from Ancient Parthens, the Defensive Bracers, to Skullar's Salvation. These will make Boulder Toss some significant part of your damage. You can swap out your Convention of Elements for an Avarice Band. That's that Act 3 Bounty Cash Ring that increases your pickup radius every time you pick up gold. You'll want to combine that with a Boon of the Hoarder Gem. You can get rid of your Bane of the Stricken for that. And then in your cube, instead of the Vile Ward, you would need to have a Gold Wrap belt. These three items are often seen in speedrunning builds. It's basically your source of I never die now. Gold Wrap gives you toughness for every gold you pick up. Boon of the Hoarder makes you pick up more gold. And Avarice Band makes you just suck up all the gold on screen, making it so you don't have to actually stop to pick up the gold. If you really feel you don't need the damage, you could even try going for an Ingum instead of a Standoff in order to reduce your cooldowns massively after killing an Elite Pack. And that wraps up this guide. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.